Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and welcome to a brand new video. So today I'm going to be telling you an exciting true story all about my recent trip to Japan. So this will be an audio only story which makes it perfect for having on in the background allowing you to improve your British English listening and pronunciation skills. Right, this will be the start of a new series where I travel all around the world telling fascinating, true stories. So, if you'd like me to visit your country next, just comment down below. Right guys, enjoy the story. Embarking on my flight to Tokyo, the adventure began with the hum of the plane's engines. As I settled into my seat, I started watching Harry Potter on the screen, whilst drinking a lukewarm whiskey out of a plastic cup. Beautiful. I was halfway through the film when I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Someone was looking at me. After turning my head, a magical surprise awaited. I was sat next to <gasps> Harry Potter. The actual actor that played Harry Potter. Amazing, right? Absolutely astonished, he begged me for a picture and an autograph. I had to give it to him. Keep learning, brother. Stepping out of the plane into Tokyo Airport, I was already set on my next destination, my capsule hotel. But sometimes in life, one must be patient. Luckily for me, I had a nice five-hour wait for my luggage, which was really able to test my patience. However, amongst the anticipation, something rather interesting happened. Engaging in conversation with the owner of Japan Airlines, my English roots sparked an unexpected connection. This encounter skipped the usual formalities, leading to an invitation for a kick around the next night. Eagerly accepting, I left the baggage claim with a new found friendship and a rendezvous on the horizon. Little did I know, this marked the commencement of my journey into the vibrant tapestry of Tokyo's experiences, where every twist and turn promised the unexpected. Searching frantically for my hotel, the labyrinth streets led me astray as I unintentionally stumbled into an onsen. <laughs> Talk about a culture shock. After navigating the maze of Tokyo's bustling lanes, I eventually reached my capsule hotel, a haven for rest after the evening's eventful journey. With the clock striking 10pm, I started to feel rather peckish. I succumbed to the allure of a classic Japanese dish a steaming portion of rice paired with raw eggs. Yum. Thanks, Japan. After my incredible meal, it was time to hit the hay, so I jumped into my capsule and called it a day. Daylight brought an abrupt awakening to a worrying realisation. I was seemingly stuck within my pod. Panic set in as my cries for help echoed within the capsule. Help, help, please, help. Oh, wait, they don't speak English. Okay, think, Dylan, think. Um, oh, my phone. After awkwardly grabbing my phone out of my pocket, I was greeted with a mere 1% charge due to a non-functional charger. Brilliant. Heading straight to Google, I got my answer. I think, um, Taskeru, Taskeru, Taskeru? And then my phone died. As minutes ticked away, the deafening sound of silence was broken by heavy footsteps. Phew, 
an intriguing mix of relief and uncertainty engulfed me. I see a man, but wait, what has he got in his hand? Is that... is that a chainsaw? Oh, what was about to happen? What did I say? Tasquero? Tasquero? Did that mean help? Did it mean something else? Oh god, he's nearly here. I can hear the chainsaw starting. Oh no. Is this the untimely end of Dylan? Oh. Oh wait, he's just using it to get me out. Cool. Cheers, mate. Arigato. Emerging from my pod prison, a desire to explore gripped me. My destination, Shibuya, a bustling district that promised intriguing encounters. I was on my way there when I encountered an unlikely companion, an affable Japanese dog named Doggy. Hmm, cute. Whilst the dog didn't speak much English, thankfully I showed him my channel and within 10 minutes he was perfectly fluent in British English. Easy. Embarking on an adventure together, we ventured for a quintessentially British experience, tea and crumpets. Engrossed in delightful conversation, I uncovered a surprising revelation. The dog, a culinary king, held the esteemed title of head sushi chef for the whole of Tokyo. Talk about barking up the right tree. <laughs> With an invitation to a football rendezvous with the owner of Japan Airlines, I extend the offer to my newfound furry friend. Agreeing with enthusiasm, we finished our teas, doggy wolfed down the remainders of the crumpets, and we made our way to Shinjuku, where the footy was being arranged. After introducing the dog to the airline owner, conversations shifted back to Japanese. So good, so good. As the game started flowing, so did the sushi. Maybe it isn't the best idea to play football and eat at the same time. I thought to myself, uh, I'm sure it'll be alright, don't worry. After a terrible miskick from Doggy, I went to go and retrieve the ball from the corner of the room. It was only after I had fetched the ball that a sudden disaster struck. The owner was choking on a piece of sushi. Knowing I had to act quickly but was too far away to help, oh, I only had one option. I flicked the ball up and proceeded to hit the sweetest volley ever known to man, which landed perfectly onto the owner's back, dislodging the obstruction and saving his life. You are welcome, mate. The heroic act resonated, fostering a deep bond between us. Grateful for the timely intervention, the owner of Japan Airlines extended a rather generous offer. Free travel for life, anywhere in the world I want to go to. With a twinkle in his eye, he then asked the question that would shape my next adventure. So, Dylan, where do you want to go next? The world, it seemed, was my oyster, and I was ready to explore its every corner. So, which country should I go to next? Comment down below and let me know. Cheers.